Yeah, here, oh, here we go. Welcome to episode 11 of the Ape and Bird NFT show. We are recording here on uh, Thursday, the 21st of July, uh, about to publish later today. Steve, how are you? Uh, are you fired up for, uh, for what has been uh, actually a big day in NFT land? Yeah, I am fired up. I, I always worry we're not going to have anything to talk about, as I say every week. And then I wake up and there's a thousand new topics. So I'm excited about what we're talking about today. Never a dull moment. We've seen uh, more no. scams and hacks and reveals and all kinds of stuff. Um, big announcements coming from uh, from a number of the big projects as well. So we're going to get uh, unpack a lot of that today on episode 11. Um, but just off the top, um, and welcome to any new listeners we should mention too. We sort of had a little bit of an uptick after uh, episode 10. So if you're sort of uh, tuning in for uh, the, the second show, thank you for uh, being with us on this journey. Um, but we are going to start off with just a little bit of news and happenings around the world of sort of what we're calling incumbent brands uh, entering into the world of uh, NFTs, Steve. I, I thought we might actually start with Nickelodeon, given sort of it's had really, really strong uh, secondary sales, particularly in this market, um, on OpenSea in the last 24 hours. Do you know much about the Nickelodeon drop? Did it catch you off by surprise? No, I knew it was on. Um, I must follow the right accounts, but most of the accounts that I followed was like, what is this Nickelodeon drop? I haven't heard of it. Um, and the funny thing is, I'm old enough, but Rugrats, I used to watch that as a maybe teenager. I don't know when it was out. Um, but yeah, I, I knew that it was there. And I think it was a, was it $50 to mint 12 of them? You got a pack? Yep. Incredible. Um, I'm sort of on a hiatus of minting anything. Uh, so I didn't mint that. Uh, did you hear about it? Yeah, I, uh, I actually put it on my sort of list of to do's to dig into it. I think about a week or two ago, I somehow saw it, I think on Twitter, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then I just forgot about it. Like many of the things on my to do list, I, I sort of just put it top too many things up on the list and never get around to things. But I saw it sort of shoot out of the gates um, <clears throat> yesterday. But really interesting, I, I put out a tweet yesterday. So it sort of said, I think, you know, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on nostalgia, right? I think for for us, similar to you, it's around about, you know, not maybe not um, Rugrats, etc. I mean, I remembered Rugrats, but I watched a lot of Nickelodeon. I remember the Nickelodeon channel on Optus Vision. I had Optus Vision before Foxtel was a thing because I wanted to get all the NBA games and they had the <laughs> sort of better basketball um, offering back in the day. But I'm really bullish on just nostalgic um, type of IP bringing new people into the space of NFTs. I mean, I've, I've always said to lots of people that um, they're not going to care about NFTs because NFTs is just a technology, right? What they are going to care about is something that is important to them, whether it's a, you know, a childhood memory, a band they like, a sporting club or whatever. And NFT technology is going to harness that. And that's where the, the, the interest is going to start to peak. So um, interesting enough, I, I sort of had a little bit of a, of a look on the website, um, you know, just before we w recorded this show. And it seems like uh, it's a bit of a cross chain um, type of mint where there was Polygon and Avalanche um, involved as well. I don't know if you oh, okay. saw that yourself. No, I didn't. Uh, the, what I had read, and again, I didn't look into it, was that it was sort of like, um, if you've heard of Vivi, which was an app, I think they had their own chain and they had the license in for like Marvel. Um, so they had a couple of Superman drops and all these other ones. So I just assumed it was a very similar project to them. So that's interesting that it was multi-chain. Uh, did you look further into it? Like what exactly made it multi-chain? Were they minting on both chains? Did you get an Avalanche and a Polygon uh, NFT? I can't say I went down the rabbit hole that far yet. Um, but one of the other dynamics that I saw, I, I actually haven't minted any of them. I, I've just seen them sort of run <laughs> up the board. But it does look like there's some some gamification and potentially a deflationary type of mechanic in there where they're saying you can burn some of these NFTs for slime and then slime gets yep. you sort of a hybrid character um, of some of the Nickelodeon, um, you know, IP essentially. So, uh, yeah, haven't gone down the rabbit hole enough to speak to the technicalities of it, but it does look like an interesting project. Yeah, and so what we saw was fifty dollars for twelve of them, and then I think it got up to a, maybe a point four ETH uh, for one. 
Yeah. So a pack was getting you over f- nearly five ETH, and that's if you had all floor ones. Uh, so that's a ridiculous amount. I, w- were there ten thousand of them? So yeah, ten thousand. At what's that per maybe a thousand packs? Well, less than a thousand packs that were there. Ten thousand. So and the floor price have actually got on their website floor price is sitting around about 350 usd now so they're, they're doing a good job of sort of making sure that they're trying to uh straddle the line of appealing to the crypto natives around sort of eth and and um you know listing that a, as a price but they're also pretty strong on the usd D price on their their website yeah so really interesting and you're right this is what's going to bring in more normal people into the space when they find a character that they love from their childhood or a current character that they watch that's what's going to get them interested we just have to make sure the onboarding is as easy as possible and i guess that's maybe why they went with avalanche uh, and polygon polygon to probably make it cheap avalanche probably have their own wallet structure like we're seeing with afl min and blockdo um so yeah it seems like they've tried to bring in the regular nickelodeon fan uh, and of course, all us DGENs from the, from the NFT space just took over and went nuts and spent all our ETH on it. So it's going to be an interesting one to watch. But I guess moving from that, we've got Nick at night. We've also got Disney Channel. Uh, so there was news about Disney Accelerator. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so this was just a press release that I sort of caught my attention that, um, you know, it's, a, it's an annual um, accelerator from my understanding. And uh, if you look down, I think it was uh, they had sort of six primary dot points of some of the uh, some of the businesses that, you know, and startups that they're looking at. And I think four out of the six, at least three out of the six were all web three uh natives so just interesting and polygon that I, was on there as well it, yeah polygon was on there so it's just interesting that um you know brands such iconic brands as disney um don't appear to be burying their head in the sand of, of what is to come down the line what we think sort of the the future is going to be in the in the coming coming few decades so a very interesting one and Speaking of sort of um, incumbent brands, Steve, as well as Time Magazine, we know that Time sort of done a pretty good job of entrenching itself into the community. Um, you know, Keith in particular, Grossman, is always at NFT crypto events. Um, he's always sort of on Twitter spaces and just immersed himself really uh, in the community particularly. And we saw actually Time Magazine come out with a new cover with Akutar on the front. Um, and it was, I, I got to say, I love the cover, to be honest. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. But this is a really weird one for me. So Time, yep. it's definitely pushed by Keith because Time and NFTs don't seem together. Like Time Magazine, it, it's just a strange thing. But they've teamed up with a lot of artists in the space. So Keith must just be like, all right, there is some way we're going to integrate the two. Um, funny thing is, Akatars, I just did have, a, I, I own three or four um, I did have a look at the floor. It went down after the news. It, it always, and we can talk about selling the before the news or the drop a bit later on. Um, but the cover did look very cool. I love the whole Akatar colors and everything. Um, but yeah, and we've also got our friend Will who runs the Littles. They've, they're a part of the Time community and they're making a cartoon with times partner or something like that so there's a lot going on in that times ecosystem with web3 uh yeah it's an interesting one to see and to get on the cover of time i remember it used to be a very big deal and being the time most what what's the really famous time um front page that's once a year it's not just, person it's, of the year yeah or something it's just person like that. of the year i think it might be titled yeah. something like that but it's person of the year yeah, so this is a it's a huge to get an NFT project on the front page. And again, just another brick in the wall of getting us in the NFT space in front of ordinary people. Yeah, 100%. I think all of this helps brick by brick, uh, as you referred to. Um, should we talk about Artifact and uh, Nike while we're on sort of some of these incumbent brands? We know Artifact is a native sort of Web3 uh, brand, but obviously acquired by Nike last year. What's the latest with this AR hoodie? Yeah, so let's mention the hoodie and then we're going to talk about um, later on how I'm a bit hesitant to mint this. But what came out earlier in the week was Artifact saying they've got 
a hoodie drop, which is tomorrow. So if you're listening to this, it's um, you're probably already it's already happened. Um, but you're going to be able to buy. And again, there's not much information out. It's a Nike slash Artifact hoodie on the back. There's a QR code. And if you put your phone up to the QR code of the person wearing it, uh, I've seen the demo of wings sprout out. Uh, maybe it flies or something like that. So whenever I see this sort of stuff, um, I see everyone's excitement in that. This sort of tech has been around for more than 10 years. I remember doing an AR, and I'm a nerd, of course. So I think it was probably nine years ago. I did an AR hunt for my girlfriend for Christmas. So we had the oldest phone and she started with a barcode that she had to get and it sent her around the house and there would be images coming out of these barcodes and everything. So this is nothing new, but people just get excited for this sort of stuff. And of course, I want one because it's going to be the first Nike NFT physical thing. Um, so I think I will get up at eight o'clock tomorrow, which isn't the worst uh, time frame. The great thing about Artifact is I think they're French based. So European times aren't so bad for Aussies. Whereas whenever we talk about Board 8, Yacht Club, and we might talk about the other side, um, getting up at two and three a.m. is just a hassle. So I haven't bothered. Uh, but yeah, it's um, an interesting one. And we'll talk about them further about the whole drop dynamics and everything when we talk about our scams and security section. But moving on to the other big brand in the space that made news this morning, and that's Minecraft. Now, Minecraft came out and said they're not going to allow any type of blockchain slash Web3 integration into their ecosystem. They said they would continue looking into it, um, which pretty much means if we can't make money from it, we're not going to let anyone else. Now, this had a huge impact on NFT worlds. Uh, do you know the project, Greg? I remember NFT worlds really running up. Uh, I think it was the back half of last year, wasn't it? I think it hit close to a 28th floor at some point. I had a quick look. Uh, I think we're hovering around one, one and a half ETH at the moment. So there's been a lot, yep. like you can see the uh, <clears throat> the open sale, uh, the open sea sales history just sort of drop off a cliff really in the last sort of 24 hours. Yeah, and this was actually one of the first ever free mints. So you were able to get this free mint it last year, it was probably November or December, uh, and then it really ran up. So I had a couple of mates that held these. Um, they're a bit disappointed this morning. Um, but it was pretty much, if you got one of these NFTs, you would also have your own sort of Minecraft land that was unlimited in size and you could build on. Uh, there were, again, going back to my disdain for virtual worlds, uh, I still sandbox Decentraland, NFT worlds. I never invested in any of them until uh, other deeds, uh, just because, well, A, stuff like this could happen. They were building on Minecraft servers, so this was a huge risk. They did say that they talked to Microsoft and they were allowed to do this. It seems maybe they didn't talk to the right people. Um, and yeah, you've got risks like that. And then we're seeing Sandbox and Decentraland pretty much a wasteland at the moment. I know they're still building and everything. I just, I just am waiting for the right metaverse to win. And of course, we're not going to have one outright winner, but we are going to have the Google of metaverses and then we're going to have a Bing and a duck, duck, go, and so on. Um, what about so, a dog? What about a dog pile? Do you ever use dog pile the search engine? No, but I use Asta Vista, Ask Jeeves, um, and that's what we're going to have. The majority are going to die, just like all these other search engines. There is going to be one that holds eighty to ninety percent of the entire ecosystem. Um, Meta's looking like it might be the Coinbase NFT version of the metaverse um, that's died off they've I think sacked a lot of employees um, so yeah my bet and it has been from the start is on um, Yuga Labs uh, so should we I guess we can talk about their um, their test over the weekend but let's finish up on Minecraft and NFT worlds it just shows that 
this was not a decentralized project because it was using Web2 companies' resources and at any time a rug can be pulled. And yeah, so a sad one. I'm sure they'll end up just making their own game engine on Unreal or Unity, but not being able to get into that Minecraft ecosystem is a real big issue. So we'll see where they go. I know the two devs are highly rated in the space. So there is hope that they can salvage something from this. Um, yes. Let's the last hope so. thing we yeah, the last thing we're going to talk about. No one would know. Um, well, there would be a few that know Gala Games. So they've done drop after drop for the last six months. They've probably got ten separate projects on the go. Another five collabs with other guys. Um, been cash grabbing for a long time. I was into Townstar, and this was very early, probably May June of last year. So. I managed to mint 25 odd town stars and at one stage um i probably could have sold for about eight hundred thousand dollars that's i had two rare ones and a lot of others uh, but i kept them and played the play to earn game that they were doing so they had made a very similar farmville type game and you earn town coin every day so i was at one stage earning two and a half thousand town coin the peak of this coin was $2.20 US. I never sold. Um, and it then went slow, well, quickly down to a dollar, then hovered around the 50 to 70 cent range for a long time, and then shot down to the 10 cent range, and it's just been going down ever since. Um, probably a month or two ago, they tried to halve the payout of Townstar coin, and they said there was going to be a cap. That didn't help. It's gone down to like one cent. And just yesterday, they decided to pull um, the economy from the game. So now you can continue playing, but you're not getting any coins. Uh, and they've said they don't know how long it's going to take, but they've got economists um, that are going to try to refigure out how to run the ecosystem and how the coins work because it was just going to keep going down to zero, zero point zero 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 one. Um, and this is their. This was their first attempt to make a Web3 game uh, with an ecosystem and a coin attached. So they need to get this right. Otherwise, every other game that they've got in development, and they've got a lot, and these guys have raised, I would say, hundreds of millions. So they're, they're as big as Yuga in how much they've been able to raise. Uh, but if they can't get this right, no one else is going to try to play any of the other games. So it's an interesting one to keep an eye on. Uh, I had been playing every morning. It was a quick five minute clicks and the game is fun enough. I just don't have time for games, but I would collect my um, tokens each day. So now I'll just be sitting on a couple of hundred thousand tokens that are fairly worthless at the moment, but hope they can rejig the whole ecosystem to make them a bit more valuable again. Yeah, hundred um, percent. We sort of have seen uh, Axie uh, suffer. It's um, suffer a bit too. Uh, so you know the play to earn model for me, and I, I'm not uh, overly big on gaming to be honest. Um, just in my personal preference. That's not to say that I'm not interested. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a tough model. I know that I've spoke to a lot of sort of traditional esports gamers, and they still are very firmly in the camp of uh, anti sort of uh, crypto getting involved. So I think there's still a fair bit to play out. Yeah, look, apart from uh, like other deeds creating something amazing, I think the only chance of a proper Web3 game is a current Web2 game putting NFTs into it. So I think we are much more likely to see Fortnite or one of these other big games, even like, um, what did my kid download? With the free, free guy, I think it was. One of these free-to-play games adding NFTs I think that will be the first big winner, and then it's much it's much harder to build a triple A game, as they say, than to tack on NFTs onto an already triple A game. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting to one one to watch over the coming decade. Uh, moving on, I'm sure you had a few of these oddities revealed today. Did you have some? What do yours look like? Are you happy with them? Let's talk about what the community thinks about them. And yeah, I think we might have opposing views here. 
Yeah, so um, I have three oddities. I uh, were airdropped. I was airdropped those three two months ago when I was still in America. I remember waking up going. I thought that was thought it was actually a scam. To be honest, I thought I'd be airdropped three scams because I didn't know it was coming. <laughs> so I went into Discord and got it confirmed that no, this is a, an official airdrop. And look, I think they were selling for about four ETH straight off the bat, and that was when ETH was still reasonably. When I say reasonably, I think you know what was that twenty second, twenty third of May. So it hadn't hit the lows that we've sort of been so around cust- the two thousand. Yeah, place. yeah, I would say so. Yeah, so I think they were going for about four ETH off the bat and um i remember thinking i might sell one or two now and i just never did and you know i was on the hop so much on my trip that i thought i'll deal with it when i come back so i put one on sale actually 24 48 hours ago but it didn't sell and i decided late last night before i went to bed uh, it was a 2 a.m reveal uh (laughs) that i was not going to get up for 2 a.m so i didn't want to leave my oddity i only put one up for sale just in case it was a rare one there was a little bit of miscommunication, I believe, um, from the team. Like uh, the, the sentiment in Proof and Moonbirds Discord and, and Oddity's channel was um, that the rarity of your bird, the attributes of your Moonbird, weren't necessarily going to be tied to the Oddities, and they were. Um, you know, I have a hoodie Moonbird with hard eyes. I've got an Oddity with a hoodie and hard eyes. Um, I have a second Moonbird with hard eyes. I have a second Oddity with hard eyes. So um, I think there was a, yeah, whether that was a miscommunication between Kevin and Justin or just what we heard, but I I can remember on multiple Twitter spaces hearing that, that that they wouldn't be linked. And that's what, and that's what a number of people holding rarer Moonbirds actually uh, thought, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to sort of sell. Um, yeah. So there, there's no doubt I've seen in Discord today, sort of I've been in transit today flying to Sydney, but I was on Discord and saw that there were a few upset people, Moonbird holders that said, well, you know, we, we were given this piece of information and, and sort of made decisions based on that, that piece of information. Um, in terms of sort of the overall, so I, I'll just loop back on, I cancelled my listing uh, last night. So I didn't sell any of them essentially pre-reveal. It probably would have been better if I did in hindsight, I think most uh most long long drawn out reveals always have a dump afterwards generally i think azuki probably bucked that trend but um other than that i can't even remember like i know we're going to talk about the kennel club i think in a minute steve but i can remember kennel club running up to maybe about 2.7 2.8 ETH pre-reveal and then sort of dumped after reveal as well which i think is a little bit of a different scenario and we'll get into that in a second yeah. but yeah, I've got my three oddities still. I think the floor's floating around about 1.9. I think it got down to 1.5 earlier with the sort of hysteria of people not being happy. But I think this is probably where we're going to get into it a little bit, Steve, just around the dynamics of, um, you know, companion drops and pre-reveals, post-reveals. And um, it's a very, very interesting conversation. I mean, for me, I had three free airdrops, so it's hard for me to get angry over something um in terms of in terms of the art um i mean i don't have any gremlin previously i know gremlins you know cryptodes and sort of nouns etc so i know what his type of art is so i wasn't expecting something that was going to look like a chromie squiggle right i I was expecting something that was a little bit out of the box pixelated etc and that's really what it was uh, I like two of my three. I haven't tweeted them out. I'm happy to tweet them out and sort of pin it or whatnot if people want to check those out. But I like the aesthetics of the two of the three. Um, I'm just holding on to them for now. I think there's a fair bit of FUD floating around and I don't think that's a good time to, to sell. Um, so I'm just going to hold on to them for now. But yeah, in hindsight, I would have liked to sell sold one. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, tell me your thoughts. I don't, I don't think you, you think much of the oddities at this stage. Well, let, let's talk about this whole well-worn path really of if you're a very popular nft project it seems a given that you're expected to then release a free mint maybe a couple of months after the main sale so we're all we're all dgens in this space we need that gambling high uh and if we don't get it from the project we're interested in we'll just move on somewhere else so like you mentioned we've i guess one of the first was uh board ap yacht club with their kennel club uh, and then we've seen it with artifacts with the monolith, uh, Azuki, Moonbirds. There, there's probably a well, gutter cat. They're, they're all 
There's so many of them. They're all done. And in essence, NF Teams is doing the same thing, but we've revealed it's just a jersey. Um, and then we're going to have a sale later on. But yeah, well-worn path. Uh, look, the cynic in me says that this could also, and this is just for all projects that do this, can be seen as a cash grab. Now, Kennel Club did it differently. They said all turnover is going to charity and then we're dropping to 0%. But if you have a popular project, you know you, the market, we're all DGENs. If you drop us something for free, and this is probably where the whole free mint era came from, learning from these drops from big projects, we're going to trade them. There's going to be a lot of speculation on them. Turnover is going to be huge. I'm not sure what Oddities did on turnover. I'm sure it was a few thousand, maybe even 10,000. It's, 10, it's about 12,000 currently. Okay. There we go. I, I'm assuming it's a 5% um, commission or... I think it's five. Yeah, I remember looking okay. before. Yeah. So there you go. There, there's a nice five, 600 ETH profit to the team as well. Um, so that's the cynic you meet now that thinks that a lot of these projects do it and it's like it's free for everybody yes it's free but you're also getting millions of dollars into your uh, business fund or whatever um, so yeah so th let's just start with that and then let's get on to the art now I'm not an art critic I've got no idea I've tried to look at these and like them and I think the general sentiment from Twitter is these are shit um, and that's not to like some people might like them um, I just can't find anything in them that's enjoyable. Now, Greplin, crypt, Cryptodes, they have character. They look cool. Nouns look amazing. Um, so the artist is great. He can do an amazing job. Uh, but these, and it could be that he was sort of constrained a few ways. Time limit, because they had to get these out fairly quickly. Having to use the traits. So that must have been a part of it and then not being able to um, copy other stuff that he's done. So it looks like there's some ants. Um, there were one or two that look like a toad, and those actually look cool. Um, but it looks like there's ants, there's other bugs and everything. They just, yeah, it looks rushed. It doesn't look great. If I were to see it without it linking to Moonbirds or Greplin, I would assume the collection is 0.08 ETH. Um, and of course the market usually is always right here and we did see that dump from near 4 to uh, it's currently 1.7 and as you said 1.5 as a low so the market at the moment has talked you also mentioned a bit of backlash with them saying it wouldn't be linked um, but then also I looked at the OpenSea page and um, it doesn't mention anything I know you've said that it might it gives you access to high rise and it gives you access to discord and so on but that that's not really known um it's just a, it's a tough one because yeah it seems to me that kevin gave him a brief of well we need something to drop you've got this long to do it uh it has to have these attributes get to it and let's get it done um so and uh, I'm just, uh, look, it might come back, but where's the utility? If I, if this does give me access to the Moonbirds community, I don't want it in my wallet, to be honest. I would prefer to just buy a Moonbird, and eventually I will. We all, look, we both love Kevin Rose, and we know this project's going to be great, and that he's going to build things. But I, I think this is a misstep. But... Um, yeah, let, me, let, let me I've got a few points for you so I okay. so I don't, I don't want to obviously I'm very bullish on the proof um, ecosystem I've been a proof collective member since day one um, so I've seen everything that's dropped you know whether it's grails and I and I can guess that that many people and still in nfts don't even really know about the grails drop that that happened sort of in february march last year and i'm not here to be the the world's biggest oddity fan um are they my favorite artwork of all time no but i would say many of your points there steven i completely get it uh subjective on the artwork right you just personally don't, don't like the artwork and i'm having this discussion with a few people now in the proof discord is because um, you know, when mutants come out, when when mutants got dropped, um, I would suggest that the general sentiment was they were ugly 
AF, yep. right? Ugly as yep. fuck. Right? I, I was going to say, with, with the, made... the art might improve if the price goes up. <laughs> Thank you. This is my point, right? <laughs> so, so if the floor in the next couple of months, and I don't know if it'll do this because the market's quite tough, but there is a big announcement coming uh, called Future Proof at the end of this month, or I should say the end of next month in, in August. And Kevin and Justin had one of these back in February before Grails was launched. And essentially they mapped out, and that was when they first said that Moonbirds was coming, right? And even as a Proof Collective member, I sort of thought a PFP project already, you know, like what is going on? I didn't even think they were gonna do a PFP project. I thought it was gonna be more around the art, you know, for, for quite some time before they would make a move like that. Um, and there's a, yeah, like I said, there's a big announcement coming at the end of next month. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's some more clarity of what oddities give you. I think that oddities are going to give you some type of utility or benefit when Project High Rise comes, which is sort of Kevin's mm -hmm. metaverse that they're building out. Um, but back to the sort of the, the mutant apes um, analogy. Uh, to... Let's stay on that for a second. So yeah. we know there is an ecosystem building and we know Ravens are coming, likely yeah. 100k plus drop uh, to get as many people into the Moonbird or Proof ecosystem. Um, where where will these oddities sit in that whole ecosystem? And if I can get a Raven for maybe 0.5 of an ETH or an ETH, why? and I'm guessing a Raven's going to look cooler than <laughs> what we've seen, why, why should I get an oddity over what's come in? And I know Kevin has said a lot that he really wants to get hundreds of thousands of people into the ecosystem. So I know you posted, well, this is a really cheap way to get into the ecosystem. That, that, was, but... Jam that was Jameson. Oh, it was oh, Jameson, just... sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, but like with Ravens coming or whatever the next drop is, there are going to be hundreds of thousands of NFTs. I just don't see the point. How, where where did you get this alpha around a hundred thousand ravens? Because that's the first time I've ever heard of a hundred thousand. Uh, might be an assumption of mine or something that I did read, but it, I must have linked the fact that Kevin was saying the next drop was going to be a much bigger one and much cheaper. Uh, and then ravens were mentioned, so I've just probably linked those two together. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, I, I, I actually tweeted, I think, in response to, to Jameson's, friendly Jameson's tweet today, Steve, that I thought, um, you know, this gave me Board Ape Kennel Club vibes of June, July last year. And the reason I tweeted that was it was a free airdrop, right? Obviously, mutants were, uh, serums were given to Board Ape holders, but then there was a, a, a surprise public sale um that ended up in a gas war at a three ETH dutch auction that sold out at i think 2.75 or 2.2.5 so i think it was be uh, uh, the analogy i was trying to use comparing i don't think you can go perfect apples for apples because the board eight kennel club um that had a pre-reveal stage i don't think it was anything like two months i think it might have been a week or no. two from memory um yeah i i remember mate it was probably a week after they dropped but, them but as revealed as a board ape holder there wasn't a lot of um information obviously this goes in line with yuga as well you know the the board ape founders are on the other end of the spectrum proof are over communicators with kevin and, and justin exactly and, yeah. and yuga keep a little bit of sort of secret source about them or sort of some secrecy about them and i think yeah. maybe in a way that was maybe justin and kevin's downfalling is sort of doing all these media it opportunities um, with oddities, like the amount of media and sort of stuff that they do in the Discord as well, they're constantly talking about these projects and they've got a lot of projects and products that they're building all out at once. So whether that's been a slip of the tongue to say, oh, no, the attributes aren't tied to your Moonbird, I don't know. But maybe that worked in Yuga's favour where there's a bit more mystery around the Kennel Club. Like, I don't feel like, and it's probably just the maturity of the market that we're in now. Like the Kennel Club was, you know, 13 months ago now we sort of the people that have been in this space for a while are sort of expecting things right when's the next announcement when's more utility when's more utility i felt like the general sentiment of the board eight kennel clubs was just like wow we get this thing for free and it sort of looks At cool the we, time, we, that, that yeah, was exactly we, it. We, do, yeah. we don't really know what it does and i still don't think that most people no, know what the kennel that, club does well, so that's, so that's we're, the we're, next we're, part we're, of their uh, roadmap where where we're sort of uh board eight ecosystem has had 13 months to figure out what the kennel club's doing and the oddities proof system hasn't had 13 13 hours yet
So they've had exactly. 13 months and proof have had 13 hours. So it's a, it's a little bit of a double standard in that, that sense, in my opinion. Yeah. Now, if, if we go away from the art aspect and of course, subjective and the fact that we're talking about it and everyone's talking about it on Twitter, that's what art does. Good, well, good art is meant to be talked about. So technically this might be great art because we're talking about it right now, but then move on to what you did say with the linkage between the rare ones and getting a rare oddity. Now, Mutant Apes sort of did that, but they just dropped serum. So I'm lucky enough to have a gold ape so I could use the serum on my gold apes and get the gold version of those mutant apes. Um, but if you had a floor version of an ape, you could sell your serum to someone else. Uh, so it wasn't actually saying we're giving, we're linking them to you. Here's serum. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I, I guess you're right on the whole part about proof seem to be oversharers. Well, not oversharers, but they share a lot. Yuga like to hold stuff and just excite you with the reveal. Um, but as I said on Twitter, I think this is one that time will tell. And as we said, if the price goes up, maybe people will like the look of these a lot more. Um, I, I think so, yeah. I, I think the main tip from this and every single drop if you have one of these sort of pre-reveal, if you've got more than one, sorry, just sell. Uh, if you're not worried about the gamble side of it and getting a super rare and do want to pick up a floor one later, 90% of the time, and you mentioned Azuki Beans uh, was a bit different, but 90% of the time the floor is going to drop. So you're much better off selling and then picking up a floor one for probably half the price that day or the next day. And in saying that, I had the PXN, which was uh, a big one at the time, probably a few months ago. I had two of them. I sold one thinking, all right, I'll break even at least. And that was one of the rarest ones. <laughs> so I was kicking myself. It always happens. Um, but yeah, I would always sell and then pick up a floor because we've seen really between floor and the rarest ones, if you don't have the rarest, you have a flaw almost these days. Um, there are very few in-betweens. So, yeah, the, my thing is I'll always sell beforehand and pick up on the floor later on. I, I think that's a that's a decent decent point for sure. Um, one thing I want to say too, though, is in reference of it to being a bit of a cash grab, I, I don't know if I necessarily share that that same view just because... That was the cynical it's a, version. It, yeah, it's, it's a... When it's... I would say if you're doing a companion drop and you're charging um, a high ETH figure for that, then that potentially can look like a cash grab. But to do a free mint and to sort of put, you know, hold, whenever a companion drop comes, everyone sort of the initial holders are on a little bit of a, a lookout of what what is this going to do to the <laughs> overarching ecosystem and value of the original That's OG the token. So it's a lot of it's a lot of stress um, and you're sort of flirting with danger, you're to towing the line for a free airdrop just to get 5% secondary sales. So what happened to Moonbird's price after it got airdropped? Did it do like a lot of other projects Mo and drop down? Moonbirds or Oddities? Yeah. No, Moonbird. So the actual the main one. Moonbirds was an instant reveal. So No, no, uh, sorry. I, I, meant, I meant the price of Moonbirds. Yep. When it was revealed that people would get Oddities, Normally you get a bump in price and then once oddities are given, the dividend is given, the price of the Moonbirds would drop back down. Uh, Did uh, that happen? Uh I can't honestly remember. It was when I was in at VCon or just finished VCon, but I don't think the Moonbirds dropped by much, if at all, um, because there was actually two things that happened, Steve, uh, after 30 days of Moonbird holding, right? So for those that oddities were actually a reward for people that had okay. um, nested their Moonbirds. So there was around about 9,600 that were nested so 400 oddities have actually been held back by the team and are going to be distributed and i, I don't really know the method methodology of how that's happening but i know that one of the teams leading that but ultimately that was a reward after 30 days of nesting but it actually wasn't the official 
30-day nesting reward. That is Moonbird hats and stickers that I've actually got coming in the post and I'll probably have in the next week or two. So um, the oddities were just, yeah, sort of um, one out of the box. And that's why I sort of used the Kennel Club as the analogy because um, mutants were always on the initial roadmap from memory with, with the board Ape system. And then they decided to, to do the sort of dog companion um, with sort of quote unquote no utility. I know that that did have end up having some utility around extra ape coin for those um, that had a dog to accompany their ape or, uh, or mutant. But yeah, look, I think um, oddities, I think there's still a lot to play out. Um, I know Gremplin was actually in Discord today and sort of gave away something where I don't know, there's a bit of speculation of whether uh, these things will be, you know, the metadata will be um, updated, etc. And I think that there will be some unlocks in the future with oddities, but completely respect everyone's opinion that they don't like the art. And, and um, you know, that's that's sort of uh, why we have these things, right? We debate and we toss them around, but um, it wouldn't surprise me uh, if oddities followed a very similar path to the Kennel Club in the sense that there's been okay well what are we going to do with these things kennel club got the pass because it was back in the day where it was sort of like we got this for free um kind of looks cool um fast forward 13 months there's all these high expectations and i completely understand if someone's bought in at three and a half four ETH, and then the floor has dropped instantaneously to one and a half 1.8 what it is if you if you're speculating you're going to be quite disappointed but if you look at the history of the kennel club and i'm not saying proof's going to repeat the feats that that board ape um has done i think board ape i'm a huge fan of the whole board ape ecosystem um but if you look at kennel club uh their past history it floated around 0.7 point eight ETH for quite some time yep. and then I it started to, to pick up another one yeah and eight. then it started okay. to bump up bump up and i think pre-reveal kennel club was at about 2.7 i can remember being sort of the the the, the highest pre-reveal so almost similar statistics to a degree um and uh yeah it'll be interesting to see how this plays out yeah the real question with all these free mints from what well, free airdrops from any project is is the community big enough to absorb these new nfts into it and proof we know just by the Moonbirds alone, how many people want to be in that ecosystem. So they have the space for another 10K collection. And just like Yuga, with all their mutants and dogs and other deeds, they have that space that there's enough people wanting to be in that ecosystem that they can do these drops. But we have seen other ones. I think World of Women had a drop and then both the World of Women and the Galaxy are below the price of the original NFT of World of Women at the time. Um, and I've seen it happen with a lot, a lot of other projects as well. It is my main concern with NF teams and players releasing 10,000 into, and we're a very small project. Um, so it, it's gonna be interesting. And, and it is like, you have to weigh up the pros and cons of all these types of drops. Uh, all right, I, we've whipped that. Yeah. Oops, sorry, I, I, no go. I, well, I was just going to say one more last point, Steve. There's, there's obviously that balancing act that you talk about with um, companion drops and, and sort of additional drops along the way in, in, a, in a project's ecosystem. But one of the things I'm wrestling with, and I really can't reconcile it, is, um, you know, when I think about paying one ETH for a proof pass and I think about someone that has come in and paid, you know, 70, 90. 80, 90 ETH, for a proof pass after Moonbirds and after the first Grails. Now, there's a lot more to come. Uh, Grails 2 will be coming up in a couple of weeks, and we can talk about that on a future episode, Steve. But one of the things as a project founder, and you're obviously one of those, is it, that, that I really wrestle with in my own head is saying, how do you how do you drive value to someone that is purchased at such a higher price than someone else that's got many more benefits and that's sort of what we're seeing with some of the people that are angry with oddities is i don't know if it's necessarily about the art it's probably more that they bought at three and a half four ETH. they've paid a big whack they didn't get a free oddity like i did because they're not a moonbirds holder but they wanted exposure to the proof ecosystem the floor drops and then obviously they then feel like they've had a bit of a rug right but from a perspective as a project founder, and I know that, you know, Kevin's answer would probably be, well, we've got a lot of things in the works, but how do you reconcile that? Like if NF Teams starts to really blow up in the next 12 to, to, to 18 months and someone comes in and buys at three or four ETH and I minted seven back in the day because I was there early. And I know that there should be advantages for your early supporters, but do you as a founder think that that adds more pressure on you to constantly deliver 
more and more because I mean I'm satisfied as an NFTs holder because I I got them for 0.07 or 0.08 back in the day, but your new holders that are coming into the ecosystem are paying a much much higher price and they've had less and less benefits um, from the beginning. Yeah, I think we talked about we touched on this last week as well. Um, you just can't worry about it if the value is the time. The value at the time is the value at the time. If they felt that three ETH was a fair price, they felt it was a fair price. What I try to do is, and I you always want to support your earliest supporters. So the guys that were there from the start, I want to make sure they get the most benefit. Um, and then people coming in right now anyone coming in now is going to get the exact same benefit as everyone else because nothing's dropped yet the only thing they've missed out is the chance to win so we're giving away a hundred thousand and a couple of trips to sporting events so they miss out on that but you do need to front load these things a lot otherwise no one's going to buy in the first place um so in our ecosystem and it's very different for each one the team's always going to be at the top then you're going to have a jersey's a companion and it's free, but then you're going to have the players under there. So, yeah, the teams, which the early guys got, they're going to be the most valuable going forward. In saying that, after I dropped the players, just because, and I mentioned the other week that we spent $400,000 on players, these look amazing. I think there is a very high chance that players are going to be worth more than teams to start at least. And they do have benefits as well. And there's a, there's more gameplay with them and everything. And I think there'll be more connection. But it's going to be very interesting to see that dynamic because owning a team, I'm going to make sure gives you the most benefits. And to mint a player or draft a player, as we're calling it, it's initially you need to own a team. So all the 10,000 teams can claim a player. So there might be none left. Now, in saying that, I think there'll be at least 5,000 left. Um, but, yeah, that gives the added benefit to holding a team now. And it is something you need to think about. But, yeah, I, when it comes to what they bought them at, I, I, you can't worry about that. Otherwise, you'll drive yourself crazy. Yeah, and I think my, you know, my, my sort of question comes at it from more of a utility standpoint too, right? Not necessarily art. If you're buying a chromie squiggle, right? You've, you've sort of missed the boat. You've, you know, so are you, are you, are you willing to pay twenty thousand USD right now in sort of, you know, yes, July twenty twenty two to get a chromie squiggle, right? So I, I am talking more from your utility projects, but. Um, interesting discussion, and I'm sure we'll pick this one up again. So uh, shout out to the oddity lovers and shout out to the oddity haters as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a hater. I just didn't like him. <laughs> Let's uh, move on to what else happened this week. So we had a first look of the other deeds, the other side, with actual um, being able to walk into the environment. So two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we looked at a blank space. Uh, this time they got to run in, they had a coda uh, that you got to fight. Uh, there was a lot of talk. The To have 4,500 players in a desktop version of a virtual world was quite incredible to see. Um, technically, I'm not sure that's been done before. So that was really cool. The whole sentiment around it seems to be very good. In saying that, the other deed prices are still low. I think I checked and they're two point four ETH, uh, and they were two point eight earlier in the week. I, th uh, I think ETH's run up in price though has had a little bit true. to do with that. Uh, yeah, very ETH, true. Re ETH um, rallying. Yeah, yeah, but it was good to see. It seems now that and of course these are at 2 a.m our time so i haven't been able to log in and um, watch in real time but i am going to have to because it seems that there's um you need to um get pretty much ticks to get the what is on the back of them uh ob obelos what, what's the word that i'm trying to it's oh, that yeah. diamond shape an obsolete or something yeah. like that anyway and now if you get involved either watching or participating you sort of get the top piece of that and it's broken up into i think eight different pieces then if you do all the steps the talk is that then for other for every other side that you have other deed that you have you'll probably get a free one because that's they've still got a hundred thousand to either sell or give 
initially on the roadmap, they were meant to sell the next 100,000 next month. That would have been very interesting to see what happened there after the shit show of their drop last time. <laughs> um, but it looks like now they've made the smart decision and are going to give it back to current holders or community members and builders in the space. So I have to make sure that I participate and get them all clicked off. The great thing is, and this is what they've done well, if you hold one or a hundred in your wallet, you only need to have that wallet and it will tick off all of them for doing each task. So I can sort of combine all of mine from all my other wallets and just do things once. Um, But yeah, so it's looking good. Uh, These, the first test went well and the talk is very positive. Yep, 100%. Let's move on. You were going to talk. We've seen Gutter Cat Gang uh, on TV. Uh, what is the, the basketball game, tournament that they're playing in? Yeah, I, I've got to say, I just saw it briefly on Twitter. It was on ESPN. It's, um, it's some type of um, summer camp or some type of Drew League. If people are familiar. It's not the Drew League, but... It's essentially a Puma sponsored event. And um, so there's two things. They've, they've had um, gutter cats on jerseys in this particular tournament. Um, but there's also, there was a, a commercial, a TV ad, and someone tweeted out the other day that they think it's probably the first NFT project that's actually had a quote unquote tr- traditional commercial play uh, on TV within, you know, sort of in the break of a, of a live sporting event. Um, and it was a really good ad, actually. If I can find it, I, I might um, I might tweet that out with the Try show. It. Um, yeah, it was, it was really good. But um, I know that Pixel Vault also, Steve, your friends over at Pixel Vault, um, were actually <laughs> were actually throwing out um, sort of had the t shirt bazookas at a baseball game. Um, I saw that last too, week yeah. as well. So sort of just uh, to our point earlier around sort of Akutars being on Time Magazine. I think all of this stuff helps, right? It just it just starts to help to normalize the conversation and normalize some of these sort of NFT project brands that are building out um, just sort of in your everyday travels, right? You don't need to be on crypto Twitter. You sort of get the T-shirt at the baseball game or you're inquiring, what is this gutter cat gang, right? And I think gutter cats have done a really good job. I'm obviously a bit of a basketball junkie myself. I don't own any gutter cat um, gutter cats, but... Um, you know the the brand appeals to me. I got to say, just that they're going down that sort of basketball route. You're a cat so, guy. You I, have cool cats, right? I do have cool cats, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm disappointed I don't have a gutter cat. But maybe I'll pick one up um, one day. But just on the back of that, Steve, we're talking about NF teams from a perspective of um, you being a founder and feeling sort of pressure or potential pressure with with various holders coming in at different um, lengths, or I should say, different timings paying uh different costs but you had a really good tweet storm that got some pretty good engagement a couple of days ago um just around i suppose the the future um of nf teams and you said you've got two drops coming up jerseys being a free drop for nf teams holders um so i've got a few of those coming my way i know that and then your players drop that you've obviously spent quite a bit of your treasury on to get those looking really good Talk us through the tweet thread and talk us through, um, you know, some of the, the feedback and sentiment you've had, because I've seen that a few notables like your Zenicas of the world are starting to sort of comment in this in this quote unquote bear market. And it, to me, as an outsider looking in, it looks like you're starting to just get the attention of a few people. Yeah, look, um, there's no debate in the fact that NF Teams is this low level project at the moment. We've got blue chips, we've got mid tier then we've got ones that have a very small but dedicated following. And that's where I put NF teams, where, look, if we want to talk about floor, we're still well above our floor. We have enough turnover. Um, We're not like a majority of projects that seem dead, gone under, but there is no defined. We're a tiny little project building in the shadows. Not many people know about us, but what I'm trying to do, and with that tweet thread, I was trying to explain where we are what we have done and where we're going. And I'm sure I've mentioned it a heap of times. And Zeneca has said he would um, he will come on our show. So I'll probably explain the whole ecosystem to him and therefore everyone listening on that show. And he does own a couple of NF teams, he said. He said he had six mint passes, forgot to mint, 
but then had three he bought three NF teams. So that's great to hear. Um, but yeah, with this, everything I'm doing, I don't think we're ready. So my thesis is that not only NF teams, but the whole NFT space, we're so small. We we think we're this huge thing because this is all we think about. This is all we talk about. This is what we bore our friends with. <laughs> but no one that isn't in this space gives a shit at the moment. It's so, and, and we're talking about, yeah, we're getting out there and all this stuff, but we're tiny. We're, we're hundreds of thousands of people. There's probably um, more people in this weird freak sex thing Discord channel than the whole NFT space. We're tiny. So everything I'm trying to do is looking five to 10 years in the future. In five years' time, I can see maybe 10% of the population having an NFT wallet and actually interacting and everything. So I'm building towards that. So everything I do now, I'm trying to do something unique, but build to the best quality. So in five years time, when we're still around, we've built out a lot of this stuff. People can come back and look and say, oh, look, he did that right. He was trying from the start to do everything right. We can talk about... Um, guys listening on the podcast, you won't see this, but I'm slowly becoming my gold ape. You would see that I've just had um, these striped black and white shirts made. So this is just one example. So our player drop, there's going to be 100 players wearing this shirt. There's going to be another 100 wearing the ref shirt we had created, which is these stripes put on the side, NF Teams logo here. But what I did with this, I could have gone and bought a heap of these for $10. Instead, I decided I had a friend in Vietnam and she is she sews for a living. I had her go and find the perfect material. So she ended up going to a lot of um, wherever they get the material, ended up being Reebok that had the best material. The minimum order with them is $10,000. So I had to fork out 10 grand just for the material on these. Um, and then she's put them together. I ended up buying a similar shirt, the exact same looking shirt uh, for $90 and $150 to check against the quality. Uh, I did return those. These are better quality. Once people get these, they will feel the weight of them. And my mum, who sewed for 40 years, came over today. I showed her the shirts. She was like, yep, yeah, these are great. So that's the biggest tick I can possibly get for these. But the key is that I want every piece of this, even though we're a small project and we're only got like 2,000 people that are going to even want one of these, I want them to get this and say, this is quality, the project's quality, and I know that they're going to keep building in the future. So next week I'll be wearing the other stripes because the ref, and I can't wait. The hope is that we get over a hundred refs at the Oz Open. Um, and when we're on TV and you see NF teams refs everywhere, that's gonna be very cool. But now, so that, that's just to say, I'm trying to build quality. And of course the 400K, probably the most anyone spent on a collection to date, that I'm hoping to be the highest quality. So my goal was clone X quality or better. And I think I've reached that point. Um, so uh, another unique thing we're doing is we're trying to bring on sponsors and partnerships. And I don't think this has ever been done before. We just brought on a clothing company, uh, Hoss. So the people watching uh, can see the brand. Uh, I've got a couple of hats showing. But Hoss is a, a merchandise company that works with um, a lot of NFL, NBA, NBA, MLB players. So a lot of these players wear their gear. So we've brought them on as a sponsor on our jerseys. Uh, and I've mentioned before that we've got uh, sponsors on the jerseys, but they're also a sponsor on the players. So if you get a player wearing one of these hats, they're gonna send you out one of these hats as well. And I'm talking to a couple of other companies to do that as well. So if you get, like I said, if you get one of these shirts, you're gonna get one of these shirts. And we've done this before with the initial NF teams. If you got a, a character with an NF teams hat, if you look in the background up there, you can see one of those hats. We sent those out. We actually were the first to do that. We had to build our own system for people to claim. Um, and then I think uh, Proof, no, who is? 
who was the Richards company, Manifold? They then came out with a Shopify store plugin that made this much easier, and they got all the credit. Um, and then, of course, Moonbirds today, I saw someone tweet saying, oh, the dashboard for Moonbirds, it's so rare that someone does this. We had that for NF Teams from day one, and this is <laughs> November of last year. So we've done, I'm quite proud, we're Aussies, we don't like to big up ourselves, but I'm quite proud of everything we've done along the way. We're one of the first to have actual utility. People come to our site, and one of the amazing things was I saw the numbers uh, of daily active users for Sandbox and Decentraland. The Sandbox guys actually said those numbers aren't right, but we have more daily active users of our site than both these billion dollar companies. So I, I hate talking myself up, but yeah, I think we've done a lot. We're tiny, but we're gonna keep going. And I know that if we can keep going, keep producing and keep doing new stuff that eventually the word will get out. Um, and then, yeah, we would, we hopefully that increases the price and therefore more people will want to get involved. And as we've said, as the price goes up, everything looks better in an NFT project. So I've held off on hype marketing and all that until I've built more stuff. So more the Yuga line. Eventually, once we've built out these players in the next bit, then I will start on the hype. Sorry for, I, I'm sure we've had a lot. No, of no, no, Ed, that, <laughs> that, that's fine. I think uh, it's good. It's good that you can, you can talk about the project a little. I'm just bringing something up here and I, I've lost my window here, Steve, that I can see you. So I'm just, uh, I'm just getting, getting back on here, but I got to say, I do a test of the merchandise of NF teams. It was one of the first, uh, first merchant or first projects that I got merchandise from. So I have a customized hoodie and the quality is really good uh, for my team, the Julian Oxes. It has the ETH crown. Um, so I got that with a couple of T-shirts. And then I think you sent me out before I did a half marathon last year, some NF team sort of merch as well, or gave me a, gave me a little discount yeah, on something. I uh, use, your, use your platform and it was, it was good. In saying that, I thought they weren't good enough. So we scrapped that supplier. The hoodie? And we've the, been, the, the customized the, the hoodie? hoodie? The hoodie was okay. But we spent months trying to figure out Supercolor, print on all, all this. We're, sort of we're going to have we're going to have to take this conversation offline because I, if, if <laughs> yes. you're going to if you're going to scrap the hoodie of my dueling oxes, I'm selling all of my. No, no, no. Teams. We we have a new supplier. I've got one of the best quality. <laughs> Tell me who they are. I want to get all my employees from them. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new supplier for the. So again, one of the first to actually allow your unique NFT on the merchandise. But yeah, we've got a new supplier. More news on that soon in the uh, NF Teams Discord. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, we're gonna... I get embarrassed talking about my project, even though I think it's fantastic. We, yeah, well, that, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll dive into it more <laughs> in, a, in a future. Maybe the one with Zeneca, yeah. like you said. Uh, I know For you've sure. got a bit of a hard stop. So why don't we wrap up with just a little bit of uh, this? You know, we, we touched on security and some scams last, last week. You warned everyone around some of these free mint projects to be very, very careful and to use a fresh hot wallet. And I think we saw within 12 hours, some people get caught um, with a project. Uh, we've also seen some drama over at pre-mint um, and we've also seen Zeneca get hacked yesterday. Yeah, so Yuga came out early in the week and said, we've noticed a lot of activity uh, and that there may be hack attempts. And then we've seen it, we've seen pre-mint, uh, we've seen Zeneca, We've seen a few others, and it, yeah, there's all. You just have to be so careful. We won't go over what I said last week, but it was yeah, just be careful. Um, the the other question, and we mentioned at the top of the show, Artifact Studios with their drop, they seem to be doing everything to make sure they do get hacked and that people are going to lose NFTs. So they have not released any information apart say apart from saying the mint will be on our website. They haven't mentioned how it's working, how much it is, what the drop is. And they've they've done this a few times where they just don't listen to the community. So everything I say on Twitter is, give us more info. You've seen what's happening. Um, people are going to be rushing because, of course, it's a Nike hoodie. People are going to see any link, click on it, and try to mint. 
I'm like I said, I want to get up at eight. I'm going to be a bit tired. I have a board eight with my clone X's in the same wallet. So the smart thing for me to do is move a clone X to a secondary wallet, but I might just leave it. I might just sleep through it because I know the risk is going to be so huge because they have not shared enough information. So just be safe out there. Do not trust anything uh, that you see. Make sure, as we said last week, when you're doing any sort of contract interaction that you read the top. And I have heard that MetaMask are working on more flashing lights to warn you. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to know what you're doing. Yeah, we. I mean, it's a stark reminder to say that we are in the wild, wild west still, right? I think we all we all think think sometimes oh, we've been around for three months in NFTs, which often <laughs> feels like three three years. Um, and we can let our guard down. I mean, I think I told you on this show two weeks ago that I nearly got caught with a fake Wag, Wag Me United premint link. Um, it wouldn't have wiped That's me out because right. I I was on a, a sort of a relatively low value wallet, but I know that um. Someone in the proof ecosystem that I know sort of nearly got caught with the uh, the Zeneca hack the other day. Um, I always think, uh, like, for those that follow Oxquit uh, on Twitter, who has a board ape as a profile picture, I, I, I love his content um, around security. You know, one of the things that he's drilled into my head, I would say, over 12 months is don't be first. And I know that's a little bit of counterintuitive to when you've got time-based drops, like it seems like this artifact first come, first serve, Steve. And I know that that doesn't always help, but... When you see something like an, a, a surprise mint that pops up on Zeneca's Twitter, um, one of the things I would tell our listeners is don't be first. Like go to Discords, go to Twitter, have a look. You're better off to miss out uh, than to be, you know, in the first five seconds or 10 seconds of these things. And more and more we are now seeing, I don't think I can remember any major project now that is saying we're going to do a surprise mint, right? I mean, you, we, we see them less and less and less because we know that's where the hackers are going and they're using human psychology of saying, quick, quick, get in now, FOMO in, um, and you know, you're gonna lose your assets. But one of the things I was gonna say, Steve, to your point around having your ape with your clones, um, yeah, obviously you could move one of your clones um, and to a fresh wallet and, and claim that way, but we are starting to see a lot of um, substantial conversation. Uh, and I know, and even with Premint, even though they had their problems last Sunday night, um, you can actually go now and dedicate. So if I have my proof pass and I get an opportunity to go into a raffle for something or be allow listed for a particular drop or whatever it might be, rather than me needing to use the wallet that my proof pass is in, I can actually nominate a minting wallet um, or any type of wallet. Um, I just need to, it's sort of like the token proof system to a degree. Premium with what, needs to add this. Yeah, so, you know, essentially designating a minting wallet. And I think that that would be, you know, that's what the community has been crying Such out a for for, for, a, for a long time. Um, and I think there are some other technical solutions that are potentially coming down the pipe that I've heard, you know, various conversations around too that can actually be baked into the smart contracts to sort of say, uh, if you hold these, you know, assets, you can you can actually use a different wallet on a regular basis. But, um, you know, I, I would say we've got to be super vigilant right now. We've always had to be super vigilant, but you can't let your guard down because obviously we know one one small slip up. Um, and uh, as Punk6529 says, it's game over. <laughs> yeah. All right, let, let's end with uh, two more things. So we saw... Uh, I mentioned Franklin last week, who owns a lot of Bored Apes. Uh, and we're talking about ENS domains as well last week. So Franklin, for a joke, decided to buy an ENS domain that said something. I don't know what it exactly said, but it was a really long domain saying, this domain is worth so much, blah, blah, blah. It was a stupid domain name. He then put a 100 week bid on it just to show, and I guess this gets to the bigger point of all these fake washing of tokens and so on, but just to show how stupid this current ENS thing is. I don't think ENS is stupid, but he was doing it as a joke to get some Twitter followers, all that sort of stuff. He then got a 1.9 or 1.8 ETH bid on it as well. So it's the lower than his bid, but he ended up accepting it. And of course he thought that was hilarious started went to twitter straight away started typing about what happened he didn't cancel the 100 week offer uh i i saw a couple of tweets under his tweet saying 
uh, did you cancel the offer? I'm, I'm sure you did that, right? And then seconds later, or minutes later, so this guy didn't mean to do it at the start, but he saw the offer, accepted the 100 ETH, and yeah, Franklin lost 100 ETH. He then went to, he sent the guy a NFT with a message and 1.9 ETH saying, oh, can you please send 100 ETH back? This was just a joke. Of course, as we just mentioned, you make a mistake in this space and that is what happens. You're done. So I like Franklin. He's a fellow gold ape. We talk in the gold ape chat. Um, he posts a lot of, I made 0.2 ETH on this flip. Yes. Uh, but this is this is a great example of how I see... I've been, I was in the gambling space before the sports betting space. And I've seen this a million times. And this is why I tell people, don't trade. Don't try to trade anything. What happens? People will arb things or, or make a little bet here and a profit there. So they'll make a few dollars. They can do this probably 20, 50, 100 times. And they'll make a couple of hundred, couple of thousand dollars. But it's when they get confident in what they're doing, that's when they make the big mistake. So they end up like Franklin's done. He's probably made 30 to 50 ETH from all his little flips. He's now lost 100 ETH. Now he's much more likely, as they say in the poker um, world, to go on tilt and then start trying to make this back and then lose more. So don't don't try to trade things. Don't. But again, this is a bigger issue. And look, it's a funny story. It's really bad for Franklin. He'll be fine. He, he has a fair bit of ETH. But yeah, just be really careful out there with this sort of stuff. But... The really funny one that we'll end on with ENS, I get a lot of um, DMs on Twitter and every now and again, I'll go in the spam folder and I had a guy and I just saw Greg's name on the <laughs> message. So I read the, tw- the DM and said, I've been trying to get into contact with Greg for ages. I see you do a podcast with him. I own Greg Oakford.eth. I think he would want to buy this. (laughs) Tell us about this story. I did not reply to him, but boy, has he got some drive to probably take 0.05 ETH off you. (laughs) Well, funny story. I'll I'll reveal my cards. I've been purposely ignoring this guy. So if uh, if he's watching, shout out to my friend that's trying to uh, trying to harm me for my own name uh, with, with ENS. Um, you didn't do too well, though. I got my own last name a couple of days ago, so you weren't really on the ball too much. But he did slide into my uh, he did slide into my DMs around the Moonbirds Mint when uh, one of my Twitter threads got a little bit of traction and uh, wanted 0.2 ETH for it. So uh, I have, uh, I, I, and that was when ETH was at at, at a decent price. Um, so I have I have ignored our man, uh, whatever his name is. Um, but uh, I don't know, maybe we. I think that I would have to be the least notable person to ever be bribed <laughs> for their dot ETH name. So I might actually put that on my sort of resume that I was it, able It's to get. you and Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So I tell you what would be funny if this if, if someone actually buys it off him and it's not me, that, that would, that'll uh, tell me that I've really made it. If, if someone then slides into my DM says it's now 0.5 or something like that. Well, I, I was tempted to send him a message saying how much and then I, that was going to be your birthday present <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see well if he is listening uh send us another message and we'll reply speaking of uh of ens's steve i got one more to wrap up on the ens and, and you sort of said that you know we're all nerds in this space and we all talk about nfts and ens no that domains all day every day i gotta say a couple of days after I got back from the US, I went around to a buddy's place of mine and he just had his first child. And um, he's uh, another one of his friends or a bro- his brother came over and uh, the family gave presents. And I felt, oh, no, I haven't got the, you know, I haven't taken a present. I'm out of whack. I just got back from the US. I'm still sort of feeling guilty. And they get, they gave them a rug, which was quite funny. So I thought... <laughs> They gave a rug for the baby. I've rugged them because I didn't bring any present. 
I went home and secured the kid's name, Dot Eth name, and then took a screenshot of it, sent it to my buddy and said, <laughs> I know you don't know what this is, but it's going to be a big deal in the future. <laughs> and they absolutely love it because they don't know what it is. And, they, and they're like, yeah. this is awesome. I said, only one person can have it. So, um, yeah, just on the ENS names for any NFT nerds out there that are looking for um, engagement presence, baby presence, anything, make sure you secure those ENSs. Well, the funny thing is, look, in 10 years, that actually be might be valuable. I remember 10 years ago, I said to my sister, I've got three nephews and nieces. Look, I can either spend $50 on a present for them or I can get them one Bitcoin. She said, don't be an idiot, get the presents. Now, <laughs> that would have been a quite valuable present but so it'll be interesting to see all right that was a good chat uh we'll be back next week with whatever happened the day before uh did you have anything to end with craig i wanted to end with something <laughs> something that you love steve and that's just our, our little disclaimer so uh just want to oh, say yeah. to all <laughs> ape and bird uh show listeners the hosts uh discuss all topics and products on this show for entertainment and educational purposes only from time to time, we will refer to NFTs, products, protocols, and other items by way of example, but this is not to be construed as endorsement or advice, especially if you're talking about NFTs. teams. Uh, you are responsible <laughs> for doing your own research and seeking your own independent professional, legal, tax, financial, and accounting advice uh, with respect to any investments or activities with digital assets and NFTs. And speaking of accounting, Steve, I still believe we have got Shane uh, Brunette. I, I hope I pronounce his last name right. But Shane from Crypto Tax Calculator, one of the co-founders, joining us on episode 12 next week. Great. We did say this last week. I know, Steve, you've got a tax dedicated channel in your Discord. But for those listeners, if you want to send a tweet to uh, Ape Bird NFT Show at Ape Bird NFT Show or Steve's handle at Day25 or myself at Greg Oakford, we will try to get some of those questions answered on next week's show. Thank you very much for tuning in to episode 11. Hope you enjoyed it. Please tell a friend and we'll see you back here next week. Awesome. See you later.